Hello, hello, hello. This is uh, Christine Holmes Mason, and welcome to Educating My Life. And I'm going to give you time to come into the room. Uh, those of you that are going to be watching the rebroadcast, thank you for inviting your followers. And it's so wonderful to have you here today as a part of the broadcast. I want to give a shout out to Princess Fumi Hancock and all the World Changer Sister Tribe. And so I'm going to be talking today, asking the question, continuing on the series uh, that I've been doing here in terms of bankrupt relationships and how to avoid them, how to avoid bankrupt relationships. Is it time for marriage? There are some questions that you can ask yourself in terms of whether or not it's time for marriage for you or not, or if you need to keep asking the right questions so that you can get to know yourself. So again, my name is Christine Holmes, international inspirational speaker slash transition coach. And I'm going to be sharing with you today on bankrupt relationships on educating my life broadcast. And so let's go ahead and let's jump into the topic today. And uh, with that, I hope everybody is doing well out there. I hope you've been having a prosperous day and week for that matter and uh, that you have been going through the series and that you've been asking yourself the questions that are a part of the series so that you can be, uh, yes, an educated consumer when it comes to the area of romance so that you can be educated in terms of knowing who you really are. And a lot of times I hear people say uh, that they just settled. You don't want to just settle when it comes to relationship or marriage. You want to make sure that you are happy. <laughs> Happiness is extremely important. And so you want to make sure that you're with a person who makes you sing, who lights your world, uh, who rocks it for you. And with that, that means that you want to make sure that you have a whole relationship. It's not just based on a financial arrangement. It's not just based on how that person smiles or, you know, how they, you know, um, you know, make your toes tingle. You want to make sure that you're connected in all the right ways. And so those are some of the things that we're exploring as I talk on this topic of how to avoid bankrupt relationships. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get into another, um, bit of this conversation in terms of preparing yourself. And so right now I'm going to continue on. Now last uh, week as we were together, uh, one of the things that I was talking about in that broadcast is um, how it is important for you to really know uh, some of the ramifications in terms of being involved in a relationship that could lead to marriage uh, that could um, that could hurt you actually in terms of being involved with someone and if they have uh, some responsibilities and you get hooked up or tied up with that person then their responsibilities can become your responsibilities too financially and depending on what state you're in uh, you could be just as equally as responsible for the children and so you want to ensure that you know these things ahead of time and uh, that you're not left in the dark or you're not surprised and so talk about these conversations talk to a lawyer find out what the laws are legally in your state if you do have a relationship with someone who is paying child support or behind on their child support and find out how that would impact you that is something that women really need to know about ahead of time and so Ask the hard questions, okay? And then also, um, let's talk a little bit more uh, about this area because a lot of people end up getting married because of pressure from the outside. They get married because of pressure from the family members, not because it's something that they really feel committed to, but they're feeling the pressure more than anything. And so sometimes they will marry out of pressure. You never want to marry out of pressure, okay? You want to marry because it's the right thing to do. You feel that it's the right thing for you, not because someone else said it, but because you know it in your heart. And so 
make educated uh, decisions in life, educated decisions about marriage, educated decisions about finances and uh, when you're going to buy a home, educated decisions, you know, make sure that you get counsel and godly counsel and ask questions. Talk to the people that are in that industry. Talk to married couples when it comes to marriage and you're talking about uh, people that have been married long standing and they have great marriages and there's a lot of great examples that are out there and they are more than willing, I find, to share with you what has been their success in marriage and they will tell you about the pitfalls as well as the successes and so talk to the people that have been married for you know 30 40 years or those that have been married for a long time and have a, a great uh, success in their in their marriage that information can go a long way and then also um, like I said make sure that you're not being pressured by friends or family because a lot of people end up in a situation in a relationship with someone because they've been pressurized and not because it's uh, a marriage that's made in heaven uh, but because they feel like they have been uh, pressured into uh, that marriage uh, situation and so that's something to uh, really consider something to think about okay and uh, I'll get on this one too because a lot of women feel like their biological clock is ticking and so they feel the pressure of that and they end up and they're like okay well he's he's seems like he's gonna be a good guy he seems responsible and you know and they marry somebody uh, who seems to be responsible <laughs> okay but he's not really fitting what their desire is he's just convenient and you don't want to marry out of convenience you want to marry out of love okay that's the way that you want to marry that's the way it was intended in other words you were intended to love the person that you're married to okay the Bible says husbands love your wives and so husbands you know it's, it's both sides it's not just a woman thing men deal with the same thing as well and many times men marry women out of convenience and so you don't want to just marry someone out of convenience you want to marry out of love you want to have a marriage that is based on love not convenience based on love not a financial arrangement based on love love never fails all these other things you know they're gonna fail but love never fails okay and so let me keep it moving here <laughs> I'm just saying that's what the word says okay so don't be pressured by time or your biological clock you know you might hear that clock ticking 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 don't be moved by that okay God is still the same God yesterday today and forever and look at what he did in the life of Sarah look at what he did in the lives of so many others okay and so don't let time dictate to you because God is a God who can reverse the clock God literally can reverse everything in your cycle he can reverse the clock he did it with the sundial he is uh, synonymous with miracles and so when we talk about God being a God that is able to do the impossible he can do that he can roll back the clock in your life and in your physical body in terms of your biological clock okay <laughs> okay there's a lot to say about that but that's what I'm gonna say there on that and remember that fear will drive you fear will drive you to make a decision that you'll regret later and so don't make decisions out of fear or based on fear don't marry someone based on fear because you feel like there's nobody else that's gonna come along please okay give yourself the uh, opportunity to receive God's best give your do that for yourself do it for yourself do it for yourself don't shortchange yourself okay and so trust it comes back to faith and trust faith and trust in God and his reliability and what he's able to do now in the midst of that you've also got to be able to be teachable be instructable you know uh, sometimes people get into a situation and uh, you know and there's all kind of situations that come up you know and sometimes people get stuck and they're stuck on believing God that God is going to prepare this one or God's gonna fix this one up and and then God's gonna put them together and or God's gonna you know uh, they've already gotten a divorce sometimes you know from the husband and he's gone on he's with someone else and they're still hoping you know move forward with your life especially if that man is married someone else he's now married to another woman okay <laughs> And so you got to let it go. 
and you got to move forward with your life and the things that God has for you. Okay, God has a bright future for you if you will allow yourself to see it. So don't get stuck. Don't get stuck in the darkness, but move toward his light. Okay, let me keep moving here. God loves you and he has the best for you. And so receive and embrace the best that he has for you. All right, so let me move on and let me share with you also that uh, if you're out there and you're desiring to be married, that's a good thing. Sometimes people hear singles talk about how they have a desire to be married and they really kind of um, dissuade them or they or they will say, oh, you know, you need to just be focused. Just be focused on um, this over here. Just be focused, you know, uh, don't even think about marriage, you know. Well, for a single person who's been single for a long time, of course you're going to think about marriage, okay? It's a natural response. And so... Yeah, that is natural for you to think about marriage, especially if you desire marriage, okay? <laughs> and so um, the thing I would say about that is, uh, yes, desire marriage. It's a good thing. Just don't be consumed with it, okay? And there's a difference. Desire marriage, that is a great thing. God put it in us to desire marriage. So desire marriage all day long, okay? Just don't be consumed with it. Just don't be consumed with it. It's as simple as that. Uh, the Word of God says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Okay? His righteousness. His way of doing things. His righteousness. And what? All these things are going to be added to you. As we're seeking the kingdom, all these things are going to be added as we seek first the kingdom of God. And then occupy yourself with kingdom business. And I was sharing on this a couple of weeks ago. You know, when you put God's business first and you begin to pursue the things of God, you will find yourself right in the flow. You will find yourself in the flow of the Holy Ghost. He will bring people into your life that have like mind, like passion, uh, like precious faith, and you will find yourself having more options and opportunities to meet more people uh, that are um, of the mind that you are in terms of building the kingdom and in terms of uh, being like-minded uh, concerning the faith. And so uh, those are great opportunities also for you to develop relationships and for you to uh, even consider whether or not you want to uh, take it to another level. Okay, you got to be exposed to uh, the people that you could even go to another level with first, right? And so occupy yourself with kingdom business and in the midst of doing so, you're going to find that, hey, there's a atmosphere that has been created uh, for you to grow in in many different ways okay all right so um, let's go on there's one thing I want to say while I'm on this area um, and that is about Rebecca uh, because a lot of times uh, people are not allowing you to see who they are authentically and it's what I call the reverse side of love I wrote a book about it you you can see that book on Amazon.com, but it's all about uh, presenting um, the best picture. You always want to, yes, present the best picture possible in terms of who you really are. And that only comes, you know, when you have transparency and when you're in a relationship or when you're in a friendship uh, where you can really be authentically who you really are. And um, when you look at the life of Rebecca, I think she's a great example because what we see in Genesis 24 uh, is we see this young girl, Rebecca, who is a, a lover of, um, or let me say it like this, she's a server. She is a server. Uh, she's one who is inclined to or maybe possibly even loves hospitality um, and there's some people that have the gift of hospitality um, but what we see in the life of Rebecca is that she's kind she is extremely kind she's not only um, giving the visitors water but she's also giving their camels something to drink and in that day it's not just like you know getting a couple of uh, things of water it's like getting buckets and buckets and buckets. And so this girl was serving. She was really putting herself into it in terms of serving these visitors that were uh, coming to her region. And so in the midst of her serving, and that was something that she wasn't putting on. That came out of her true nature. That came out of who she truly was. It was her natural nature to serve in that way, and therefore she could do it, and therefore she could extend herself in that way. And a lot of times you are able to identify um, what the true nature of a person is by what 
they naturally do what comes naturally for them it's not uh, it's not a headache for them to do it is something that comes naturally and normal for them and so uh, one of the things that we can see in the midst of what Rebecca was doing was that she had a servant heart and <laughs> We look at the person who was sent by Abraham to get a wife for Isaac what did he do he literally saw this servant heart that she had and he said the servant said okay she's the one he prayed to God that God would show him and she was the first one that came out she was the first one that came out and what was she doing she was serving she was serving she had a servant heart and he knew this was the one Okay, she had a right attitude. She didn't have an attitude, you know. No, she was glad to serve. She was glad to do that. And so that is a lost talent or lost um, uh, virtue in many circles. But it is uh, something that um, is extremely important um, and something that can go a long way in your life. A soft word turns away wrath. You know, just being kind, just being nice and hospitable, that can go a long way because you can be nice to someone and then they can tell somebody else and that person that they tell is the person that you really need a favor from. And uh, that could be the very situation that could uh, move you into a whole nother place in your life. And so what you do as a normal part of your life, what you do as an extension of who you really are and truly are authentically is what can draw people to you and uh, draw people around you and cause doors to open for you. Okay, so let me keep it moving here. Okay, I'm going on now. Uh, when we talk about preparation and just being prepared, um, it's so important that you prepare yourself. Uh, a lot of times people are looking at the ideal partner for them or the ideal mate down the road. And they're looking, they're studying, they're, you know, um, looking at a lot of different things. I think it's um, really helpful <clears throat> that there's some positive things that are coming out of um, a lot of uh, the dating sites that are being put up in terms of people's personalities matching. <laughs> um, and they say nowadays that over 70% of people who are meeting are meeting through online services. And I think that a large part of the success that they're seeing is because people are more matched. They're more matched because it's based on um, all these different um, psychological um, surveys that they're doing um, and questions that they're asking to uh, get better matches so that people can end up with people that they're better suited for or that they match in terms of their personalities or in terms of their likes, their dislikes, in terms of their, um, their values. And so um, it serves for a lot of people ending up coming together and ending up getting married. So it's important that you prepare yourself to be that husband or to be that wife, uh, to build up yourself spiritually and to build up yourself in terms of developing yourself and developing your character, uh, becoming what you believe, becoming what you believe, becoming what... Uh, you believe and walking in that and walking in uh, the fullness of what God called you to walk in walking in the fullness of who you were created to be and so I say become what you believe become what you believe instead of you know focusing so much on you know that person and everything that you want them to be focus also um, on or spend more time on becoming 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 you, <laughs> walking in the strength and the fullness of who you are so that they can recognize you, so that they can really see you, okay? And uh, choose wisely, choose wisely. Of course, Amos 3 and 3 says, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? And the word tells us in 2 Corinthians 6 and 14 not to be equal, unequally yoked together with a non-believer, but it tells us uh, to, you know, 
be sure that we're not being unequally yoked. And so you want to make sure that you're not unequally yoked. Uh, it says in that same passage or scripture, uh, what communion has light with darkness, okay? What communion has light with darkness, okay? If, if anybody is giving, um, is, is putting any comments in there, I can't see your comments, so it's not that I'm ignoring them. I just can't see them. <laughs> so um, you can also be unequally yoked spiritually with believers. Um, so you just want to ask all the questions, okay? Um, if you're going to be in a relationship with someone that leads to marriage, you want to know, are they a tither? Are they filled with the Spirit? Do they speak in tongues? Um, do you both believe in the same kinds of things? Uh, do you believe in women in ministry? Okay, you may be called to ministry or you may be called as a businesswoman. Uh, do you both believe that women can be strong in the business arena? Okay, or is he of the mind that after you get married, you're going to have to take a second seat and, you know, let go of your career ascension and, um, you know, uh, focus more inside the home? Are you both in agreement on that level or is he okay with you being that career woman? And that uh, powerful woman who dominates in the marketplace, okay? And yet, at the same time, when you come home, you know how to take and adjust that hat, okay, of domination in the marketplace to submission in the home as a, you know, good godly wife. You know, I'm not talking about submitting to any and everything. I'm talking about submitting in accordance to the Word of God, okay? So, is it a person that you can really trust that, that, um, that you can uh, surrender that you can uh, trust him to do that for so those are questions that you really want to have in place before you make a transition down the aisle okay so those are questions that you really want to know ahead of time and um, then also ask yourself uh, questions like uh, does he believe in miracles if you believe in miracles does he believe in um, divine health or divine healing Okay, can he get a prayer through? Can he get a prayer through for you? If you're uh, stranded, can he really get a prayer through when, you know, you may be facing a situation, if you were facing the situation and the doctors didn't have a remedy, does this brother know how to pray? Can he pray you through? Can he get a prayer lifted into the presence of God is the question. Okay, and then marrying the one suitable. Okay, and when I say that, I'm not saying that he has to be super spiritual. I'm just saying that he needs to be someone who uh, can walk with you. Can he walk with you? That's a question. Okay, marrying the suitable one. And the blessing of your family. The blessing of your family. It's important to have that kind of blessing. Uh, a lot of times people disregard or they neglect to get the blessing of the family concerning the person that they're going to marry. And that's important. I'm not saying that in every situation it's always going to be right because sometimes you got, you know, heathen for family members and they have no spiritual uh, undergirding. They couldn't tell you if a fly was a frog. And so I'm talking about people that are, are really spiritual and uh, you can trust their judgment. You can trust their wisdom. Um, and uh, in general, you just want to make sure that you're not too far out there, you know, in terms of not getting the blessing of your family when it is at all possible. You want the blessing of your family, all things being equal. And then the blessing of your church family as well, because uh, pastors and church leaders often have ears and eyes and can see things that everybody can't see and so you want to have the blessing of uh, your spiritual church family provided also um, that they are walking uh, in the strength of the Lord and that they have eyes and ears to see spiritually and then also the blessing of God of course marriage is honorable and all and God blesses marriage and so you definitely want the blessing of God and so uh, you don't want to you know, get into a rebellious state where you're just like, oh, well, I'm going to marry him. I don't care what nobody says, okay? And then you have dismissed yourself from the blessing of the family, the blessing of your spiritual family, and then the blessing of God. And so you want the blessing of God upon your life as well as upon your marriage. And so those are things that I would say. Um, and then remember this also, the Ecclesiastes 4 and 9, it says two are better. Two are better than Two are better than one. 
Why? Because they have a good reward for their labor. They have a good reward. When two people come together to do something, to accomplish something for the kingdom of God, and they're in unity and they're in agreement, there is much more that can be done. You know, there's much that can be done, the Bible says, through the strength of the ox. Well, there's much that can be done through two coming together in agreement. How can two walk together unless they be agreed? But when they can come together, when they can join up, when they can yoke up, with two, you can do more than one can do. One will put a thousand to flight, but two will put ten thousand to flight. And that is the power of agreement. And that is the power of coming together as one in terms of a great godly relationship. And so I'm going to conclude my uh, broadcast for the day. And again, my name is Christine Holmes Mason. I do want to invite you to be a part of the sister tribe at World Changers Sister Tribe. And you can do that by simply going to bit.ly join sister tribe now. Again, that's bit.ly slash join sister tribe now. And you can be a part <coughs> of sister tribe and then also uh, for those of you that may be out there that are looking to be a, a part of a global movement you want to get more involved in the world and uh, there is an opportunity for you to do so by simply going to adasa a d a s s a a d a s s a adasa foundation adasa foundation.org and you can be a part of a global movement helping youth over in nigeria and doing other great things in the community and so with that my name again is christine holmes mason i am a international inspirational speaker slash singer and transition coach and what that means is that i take people from stage to stage in life whether in their faith their finances or their personal growth and that may include a myriad of things including grief including uh, transitioning out of sickness into divine health it could also include being totally set free from sadness and sorrow and moving into a place called happiness. And so with that, I'm going to encourage you to <clears throat> walk with the King. God bless you and have a great week.